Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. We are looking at chapter six now for thermodynamics one, and chapter six is on the thermodynamic properties of fluids. So to get started, um, we're going to be looking at the fundamental property relations for a homogeneous phase. Now, we have Gibbs phase rule, okay? And Gibbs phase rule says that for a pure system in a single homogeneous phase, then n, the number of components, is 1, and pi, the number of phases, or p in this case, I've written it as, is 1. I don't have any reactions, and so the degrees of freedom is 2 plus the number of components minus the number of phases. Those are both being 1. I end up with 2. So that tells me that I can specify any two state variables in order to fully define the system, okay? So what are the state variables? Well, they are pressure, temperature, volume, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, and then now that I've added two new ones, A and G. A is Helmholtz energy, and G is Gibbs energy. Now we haven't really talked about those two yet. We will be very, very soon, but they are very similar to H and U. In fact, they are in, defined in terms of these others, much like H was defined as U plus PV. Now remember that we, uh, in the last chapter, had been looking at the first law for a closed system and we said, well, if I assume a reversible process, then dq is t times the change in total entropy. And dw for that reversible process is minus p times the change in total volume. And when I do that, I end up with the change in total internal energy is t times the change in total entropy minus p times the change in total volume. And this is a fundamental property relation. And this will connect my primitive thermodynamic properties, primitive meaning the ones that I can measure, pressure, volume, and temperature, to these energies and entropy properties, S, H, U, and our new ones, A and G. And so from these PV and T, I should be able to derive any of these other properties or state variables using these fundamental relations. Now, U, we've just determined is, you know, our fundamental relation, but I can also do this for other energy functions. So H is U plus PV. And we've looked at this one before, and so if I play with this and say, ah, du plus dpv is du plus pdv plus vdp, using a product rule, I can work with the fundamental relation for u and get a new fundamental relation for h. And this says that the change in total enthalpy is t times the change in total entropy, plus the total volume times change in pressure. Now A and G we haven't seen before, but we can define those. And A is the Helmholtz energy, and it is defined as U minus TS. And if I play the same game with this, DU minus TDS minus SDT using the product rule, I can get a fundamental relation for A. So the change in total number of moles or total Helmholtz energy is the negative total change in entropy times dt minus p times the change in total volume. I also have Gibbs energy. And Gibbs energy you may have actually run into in other places. Um, when you're talking about reactions, this is one that frequently comes in. But if not, don't worry about it. G is by definition H minus TS. Again, playing that same game with a product rule, I end up with a fundamental relationship for G. 
Now, all of these are done with total properties. But if I just say, eh, I want to do this for one mole, it's going to clean up the notation a lot. And so we end up with this set of expressions down here. Now, the cool thing is about all of these is that they all contain things that are state variables, state properties. They are not dependent on path. And so I have relationships between my primitive properties, PV and T, and entropy, Gibbs energy, Helmholtz energy, and our old friends, internal energy and enthalpy. And so these last four equations here are our set of fundamental relations. So I'm going to pause the video here. We'll come back and we'll look at these a little bit more detail in our next lesson.